What's up guys, Perry from Rockville here, and today I'm gonna to teach you how to set up your RPA series of Bluetooth amplifiers. This video will apply for the setup of the RPA 60WBT V2 and the RPA 70WBT V2. The only difference being that the RPA 70, which we have right here, comes with two wireless microphones. Each one comes with the amplifier itself, a wireless remote, antennas on the back for your FM radio and wireless microphone signal, and a couple of rack ears and screws. You can place this amp into any rack bag or rack mount by using these rack ears. All you have to do is line up each rack ear to the sides of the amp and use the included screws to secure them to the amp. But using these are completely optional, so we're gonna leave ours off for now. So now I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my amplifier. And when the amp is turned on, you'll see a spectrum analyzer which shows us how loud each frequency is getting and which mode the amp is on through the LED display. We also have a headphone jack so we can hear everything from the amp through our headphones. We also have controls for music playback including pause, play, previous and next track and these buttons can also be used to tune your FM radio. There's also dedicated buttons for each sound source we have connected to the amp. So whenever we want to hear sound coming from our optical device we'll press the optical button here on the amp. Whenever we want to hear the sound coming from our DVD player we'll press the DVD button and so on. There's also an LED button to turn the LED lights on and off and we can control all of these features and more with the wireless remote control. Now there are two channels available to use with this amplifier. One for your left side of speaker and one for your right side of speakers that are both 4 ohm stable. There are also two sets of output terminals per channel that are set in parallel. This means you can use either of these output terminals as long as the impedance of your speakers or combination of speakers doesn't fall below 4 ohms per channel. So for example, if I'm working with one side of speakers, I can run one 8 ohm speaker per terminal for a total of two speakers per channel with a final impedance of 4 ohms. I can do the same exact thing with the other side of speakers for a grand total of four speakers used with this amp. But you never want to run two 4 ohm speakers per channel because that will cause damage to your speakers and your amp. These amps are also powerful enough to power your pro audio PA speakers or karaoke speakers. Here's a chart of all of the different combinations of speakers you can have connected to your amp. So here I have four Rockshelf 68 V2 speakers that I'm gonna connect to each output on my amp. To connect the speakers to the amp, I'm gonna need four sets of speaker wire. I'll first unscrew the terminals here on the back of the amp. I'm gonna take one end of each speaker wire and plug the red wire into the positive terminals of the amp and I'm gonna connect the black wire into the negative terminals of the amp. Then I'll take the other ends and plug them into the positive and negative terminals of each speaker. Next, we can set up the wireless microphones that come with the RPA 70W BT V2. To do that, you'll wanna remove the end caps of each microphone to reveal the battery compartment. Then you'll need a pair of batteries to plug into each microphone. Then you'll just take the end caps and screw them back onto the mics. So now if I raise the mic volume knob on the amp, and the main volume so we hear everything come out of the speakers. And then turn on my microphone. You should be able to hear my voice coming out of the speakers. After you turn on the microphones, you'll see the displays here that read what channel the mic is set to and what frequency it's set at. Each microphone is preset to its own frequency so you get the strongest signal possible without any dropouts. You can also set each microphone into mute mode by flipping this switch in the middle so you don't hear my voice coming out of the speakers at all. You can also raise the mic antenna on the back of the amp to optimize the signal between the microphones and the amp. Now the amp also comes with quarter inch microphone input so we can connect even more microphones to our setup. So for this kind of setup, I'm gonna need a microphone and a female XLR to quarter inch cable. I'll take the female XLR end and plug that into my microphone. Then I'll take the quarter inch end and plug that into one of the mic inputs on the front of the amp. Today we'll use mic input one. So again, I'll raise the mic volume knob and the main volume knob so we hear it come out of the speakers. So now if I turn on my microphone, you should be able to hear my voice coming out of the speakers. Now we can adjust the sound of the microphone with the mic tone knob. So as I turn it up, you'll start to hear a little more low end coming out of my voice. And as I lower it, you'll start to hear that low end go away, but you're still able to hear me nice and clearly. We also have this echo knob here, which is really cool because it will give our voice an echo, an echo effect. effect. <laughs> The amp also comes with an RCA line input so we can connect our DVD players, CD players, or any music playback device with an RCA output. There's also RCA outputs that we can use for different applications. For example, we have the record output which can be used to send signal from the amp out to a recording device. Since the recording level output signal is a lot lower than the standard line level output signal. Next to that, we have a preamp output that we can use to send signal out to an additional powered amp. 
powered sub or powered speaker. And then there's a dedicated sub output that we can use to send signal out to a subwoofer for additional low end. We can adjust how much signal goes out to the sub with the sub out knob here. On top of that, there's a coax or optical input so we can connect anything from gaming systems, TVs, computers, or anything with a coax or optical output. If you do plan on using the optical input on your amp with your TV, you want to make sure that the optical output on your TV can be used for audio. It should say something like audio out optical if it can. Next you'll need an optical cable. Plug one end into the optical output of your TV. You'll know you're receiving signal through the cable if the other end is lit up red. Then you'll plug that other end into the optical input of your amp. You'll also want to go into the sound settings of your TV and switch the output device to audio out optical. Uh, then you'll want to go into the expert or advanced sound settings and switch the audio format to PCM to ensure that the sound going to the amp is in high res audio. We can also adjust the overall sound coming out of the amp through the treble and bass controls. Adjusting the treble will control how much high end comes out of the amp and adjusting the bass will control how much low end comes out of the amp. To access those controls, you'll want to use the menu button here until you see the words treble and bass pop up. And from there, you can use the master volume knob to adjust those settings. There's also a bunch of preset EQ settings that you can use through the wireless remote, including ones for pop, rock, classical, or jazz. We can also adjust the balance or how much of everything comes out of the left and right speakers through the balance controls. Again, for that, you'll want to press the menu button until you see a display for the left and right channel. And from there, you'll want to use the volume knob to adjust how much is coming out of your left or right channel. We also have many ways we can play music through the amp, including the 8th inch aux input on the front, the RCA input on the back, the FM radio, the USB input, and Bluetooth. To connect to Bluetooth, you'll first want to set the amp into Bluetooth mode with the Bluetooth button here on the top. Then you'll want to go into the Bluetooth settings of your smartphone or tablet, search for the device with the name of your amp, click on it to pair, and you'll know you're connected when you hear those chimes. This is great for karaoke setups because you can go into YouTube and look up any karaoke version of a song so you can read the lyrics off your phone and have the music play out of the amp at the same time. You can also do this with your smart TV connected to the amp if you go into the YouTube app and look up that karaoke version of the song. So now that we've got everything set up with an additional subwoofer to fill out that low end, let's hear how it all sounds. So hopefully this showed you guys how easy it is to set up your RPA series of Bluetooth amplifiers. But of course, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to reach out to our customer support team through phone or email. As always, I'm Perry from Rockville, and we'll see you guys next time.